Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming back. Um, yeah, I'll once I make that Lambo money, I'll upgrade my Zoom account first. <laughs> all right. Uh, so if we're all back, uh, the point I was making, the point that we were saying before was um, having multiple accounts, having multiple apps to do your trading in and the advantages that that brings you. One advantage is you get around the SEC trader rule, the three-day rule, we'll call it. Uh, they call it, we can call it the same thing. Um, and the second thing is it, it allows you to have multiple areas to, to do trading on the same stock picker. So I could trade Twitter over on Robinhood. And if I notice it's losing and it's dropped a bunch of value, I can jump over to Thinkorswim and buy it at that low rate and then as they both rise, I get money on both of those, those things. One, one comes back to break even and one makes the money that I should have been making in the dip. So um, that was what Yukubu was saying um, as far as um, using multiple accounts. And I also do the same thing. Um, for some of you new folks, um, I recommend it. Uh, that's, of course, your choice. Just um, let me pull up the presentation again. Again. Just for the sake of this recording, I'm gonna pull up the disclaimer. This is not investment advice. Um, you know, everybody, you're, you're, all, you're all big kids. And so, you know, you do your trades and, and we're, all, we're all gonna get filled through. So um, again, uh, we were having an open discussion. So I want to unmute. Anyone who wants to, um, okay, great. Anyone who wants to unmute and talk, please do. Uh, this is an open discussion time. So um, go ahead and unmute yourself if you feel like uh, contributing and I'll mute everybody when we are ready to move to the next section. Okay, that. Anyone? Uh, Anybody want to talk about uh, uh, how you picked your tickers? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, Eric, you seem to have a, a really good handle on entry and en exit points. So, I typically, and uh, uh, I have a little Facebook group that um, I kind of do little videos for uh, and things like that with my with my buddy. Um, cool. But I typically use uh, three indicators, well, four, but the most important one I use is the VWAP. Um, that to me is is money. Um, you know, depending on how much money you have to trade, if you jump in when it's below the VWAP and uh, and the SMA is below, and it starts to creep up and starts to start touching or try yeah. trying to cross the VWAP. Um, that's one indicator for me to start paying closer attention to the stock. Um, then, and I use the um, nine day SMA. Um, nine day, okay. Yep, nine day SMA, I use the VWAP. And then I look at the RSI. If the RSI is starting to turn green um, and it's, you know, it's just under now, this is obviously you guys do how you do, but um, typically if it's oversold, it's got to go back up. It always does. So you just pay attention to oversold. And as soon as it starts to look like it's it's coming up a little bit, I mean, if you buy in and you get, you know, call it 20, 30 cents a share, you can, you can make your 300 bucks a day easy. Uh, just so you guys know, that's my goal. My goal is 300 bucks a day. Um, if it gets more fantastic, like you guys saw with uh, Soul and Vuzi, that that's just that was just I don't know. You are our soul man. Um, soul and, man, I got, and I got I think soul. You bring up a good point to to some of the newer folks in the group, and and that is setting goals. Um, you know, give yourself a, a target because uh, otherwise, you know, you're just kind of trading pennies, and if you don't really have, you know, if you don't have that. Uh, that gold Lambo in mind and, and some sort of goal that you're really going for, you know, you're, you'll, you're going to continue to trade pennies and, and you might as well just be your grandparents. Um, yeah. uh, do you listen to, does anybody use like, I, I mean, obviously we all post in the, the WhatsApp group um, stuff I've seen 
uh, Seeking Alpha. I've seen Bloomberg, of course, and all the, the biggies, um, CNBC. Are there other sources that anyone goes to that they found reliable? And this is open discussion. So if you want to unmute yourself and just contribute, please do. Anyone? I, uh, I use stock twits mostly just to see what people are anger selling. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, I get a lot of notifications through a couple of apps. Um, we've used, there's a couple of people who recommended Stocks Alerter, which has had some okay signals, but those are generally three to four week signals. So to what Yakubu was saying, if you're, if you're looking to, to do quick trades and stuff like that, those maybe aren't the ones that you wanna be doing because they take three or four weeks to mature. And while they're maturing, you don't have access to that capital that you could be you know, playing on other uh, tickers. So um, I get, uh, there's a, a couple bots that I have. I haven't, draw, I haven't pulled the trigger on the subscriptions yet because what they offer through the free service is you know, pretty, pretty good information already. Um, but there's like chart bot and like I said, stocks alerter. And um, the more recent one that I found, I'm just going to pull up here on my phone is um, VectorVest. VectorVest has this neat little app and it's got these little speedometers, these four little speedometers that sit next to each other that tell you kind of um, the ratings red to green on how they think a, a, a stock is doing. And uh, I wish I could share. Uh, I'm not sure how to share my phone, but it's called VectorVest. And I'm thinking about dropping the, or pulling the trigger on that one and getting that one because it, it the, the four indicators it has are um, market sentiment, bearish or bullish, um, fundamentals. Like uh, I personally and Yakubu, you know, you do a lot of research. I'm a lazy, lazy man and I don't do enough research. Um, and so, uh, you know, a lot of times I'll rely on these indicators of, uh, you know, the people who've done the research of these automated systems and AI systems that have done the research because I'm finding a lot of these new AI technologies are getting to be pretty smart. Um, you know, not going to be the rise up of our robot overlords anytime soon, but um, there's a lot of good uh, analysis of the fundamentals and the technicals that's done automatically for tickers that I just don't want to sit there and do the research for. Um, so there's, there's some apps there that are good. Um, just real I just briefly. posted. Uh, I Go posted. Uh, I posted the little penny stock uh, screener that I use. Uh, it's an app. Okay. It, this does not work in pre market though, so just keep that in mind. And this is in the okay. I see it in the WhatsApp um, yep. group for anyone who's curious about that. You'll find it there. Yeah, it, if you could share that VectorVest app in the WhatsApp group, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Here, now let, me we're, just, we're uh, all... let me just do the app share. Copy yeah, it. I like uh, I like this. It's called Penny Stocks. I like it because it's got hot stocks. It's got trending stocks. It'll it'll take everything apart and go like marijuana stocks. Well, you know? I think that's the 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 app that got us all here. <laughs> I think that's how I found the yeah. WhatsApp group is through that one. So yeah, definitely a winner. I just posted the vector vest in the uh, WhatsApp. Awesome. Group. So um, thank you. If anybody else want to talk about their experience this week. Um, I was trying to pull up trading view, but I don't know if it'll let me connect at the same time I'm running a zoom. So let's see. Nope, it won't. <laughs> um, the next thing I wanted to talk about is a uh, group strategy for this week. Um, we're doing pretty good this past week. Like everybody was just kind of like, it felt like everybody who was kind of up here was reaching their hand down to people who were down here and saying, Hey, come join me up here. And so that's really one of the strengths of this group is that, you know, Hey, I'm working on this over here, guys, you know, come join. Let's, let's, let's ride the wave together. And I think that's one of the benefits of 
the group. And so um, I just wanted, you know, in this next couple of minutes, um, again, we only have limited time on these Zooms. We might have to, to do the uh, learning series on a third Zoom this afternoon. Um, but let's take this time to just talk about like, what are you looking at this week? Like for me, I'm just gonna pull up my, I'm gonna pull up Thinkorswim on my phone. I mean, I have that Twitter uh, investment. That's a big investment for me. And so I'm really hoping that it pans out. Um, I've bought I've bought the dip with all of these anger traders and I'm up to about 140 shares, which is a lot for me because I'm small, small account investor, like some of you were asking in the group. Um, and yeah, that one had better pan out. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, I might be out rent this month. But the good thing about Twitter is that it's an old ticker. It's solid. They're not going anywhere. And they're especially not going anywhere from a bunch of angry uh, people who are mad about the election and who are going to be like, Argo Bargo, I'm not going to tweet anymore. Okay, bye. Um, a lot of my good ones this week were Alibaba. That was a stock alerter thing. Again, three to four weeks. Um, I'm waiting for that one to hit 300. And when it does, I will have probably um, made about $600 on five shares, which I think is pretty darn good. Um, Gilead Sciences, G-I-L-D. I've had for many weeks, and that's one of the biotech companies that is making the vaccine. And I bought, I bought Gilead this time last year when that asshole, Larry Kudlow, got on CNBC as the, the economy was starting to drop off and Trump was telling everybody, oh, 15 cases and we'll be down to zero. And Larry Kudlow's just like, get in there and get in the market. And he was trying to sell it like a freaking used car. And that's when I started investing just to test their bullshit. And I was right. I lost a bunch of money before I got smart and started making money in this group. So uh, Gilead was one of those ones. Gilead is a great example of a stock that you hold because it drops so low when you thought it was going to go up that you just have to hold it. And right now I'm looking at about a seven and a half percent return on that one just for being patient. Um, there's a couple of um, tickers that are, have done okay, and these are from the group. OPTT has done really well. Um, Vuzi, which is a Jarek uh, ticker, that one's done just absolutely spectacular. We've got a 19%, 19% return rate so far uh, on that one. So thanks for rent, Jarek. I owe, I owe you a beer. If I ever get down to Vegas, I will take you to the, the double down. Uh, it's my favorite punk rock bar down there. I, I will um, gladly accept uh, beers, you know, over uh, the internet too. That's always a good thing. And I, I'm a 49ers <laughs> fan, so I won't hold it against you that you're Green Bay. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, over on Webull, I only have about 600 bucks over there. And really, um, that's for my penny stocks that I get over here. The real penny stocks, like six, seven cents, maybe a dollar. The ones that are going to go from 12 cents to a dollar, you buy 100, 200, 300 shares. And on Webull, um, I got a tip from StockTwits this week on KC um, and XONE. I think I posted these in the group, and those are doing really well. Um, Weed stocks, I've had sundial growers and sundial growers just will not break 80 cents. And I just, I wanted to hit a dollar so bad. So um, that's, <laughs> that's been um, kind of one of those ones where I, I just, I wish it would hit that, that limit. But what I'm finding is, is that when, when a stock starts to bounce between a certain limit that's when you just start playing that that range right so if you hit the top of the range and you know it's going to go back down you sell and you play the short and then when it hits that lower band you flip it and you buy and and you can just kind of play that whole thing all day that's what you call a cash register or a cash machine that's like palantir plnt or p l t r um 
things like that. So those are strategies for new folks. When, when you're, you're looking at a stock like Sundial Growers that it just won't go past 80 cents go up as high as you can get it. If you're going to take a loss, like Yukubu was saying, cut that loss and then just start playing that range. Um, yeah, let me chip in a little bit on, on please, plant here. Please, I'm going to move. Yeah, hello? Yeah, so like um, plant here, just like the way you're saying, man, um, plant here has been very, very good for me as well. Like I got into this trade right by the IPO and if last week you guys will remember, I talked about what's the name of company naming. Actually, Plantia, I didn't know a lot about it. Um, I traded that day. I made um, I, I traded this penny stock. I bought the stock around like one dollar, and then that day, the stock went crazy. So, I think that day I closed that I closed that day with about nine thousand dollars, and I'm like, I'm not gonna trade anymore. I went out. So I came, and then I saw Plantia. It was in the news, people were talking about it. And then I went to look at Plantier. It was trading at $9. And then the stock went IPO for $10. And I've had this, um, what's the name, experience with all these software companies. Like I'll be looking at the company and then in the next maybe one year or two, the stock is like $80, $100. So I'm like, Plantier, the, the name sounds very, very like tech, techy name and stuff like that. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just buying 1,000 shares. I just bought the stock. It's in my, uh, what's the name? My long-term account. I left it. And from that time, about three weeks down the line, the stock kept dipping. Like, it died. I'm like, no, I'm in this stock for the long haul. So I left it in there. And then um, after three weeks, that was when the stock started making more moves. And I listened to the CEO's interview. And what made me even love the stock was the CEO himself said, you don't have to buy his company don't buy it. And he said, we're going to conquer the world. Like the CEO have a lot of similarities, just like um, Elon Max. So a lot of if, a CEO, yeah. if a CEO could just come and tell you, listen, you don't have to buy my company, but I'm going to conquer the world. Come on. You should know that he has something bigger. Yeah. He's like, got confidence because he he's got something exactly. that uh, he, he exactly. hasn't told anyone yet. Exactly. And just that is the same way um, Elon Max also came. Elon Max said, you don't have to buy my company stop he doesn't care like those are the company those are the like what's the name ceos i like to see they, they they call weird ceos but these ceos they will go they will die for the company they don't care you know Matt used to sleep so when i saw that i saw plants here the name that naming that's what what me what got me um that that's what like it caught me on on that stock and i started researching it and then i started playing options on it and all the options I've been playing, even just, unfortunately, I've been so quick, hasty because the stock been going back and forth these days. Mm -hmm. I bought the stock and I think I lost close to 80%. And then wow. this Friday, yeah, this Friday, it came back up. Like I made, it it came back up, but I made um, more than about 15% of my money back. Like I made, um, I, I was profit about 15%, but I thought the stock was going to dip back again because it has this, support resistance for about around $24 because I was using that as my cash machine. I right. sold it and then unfortunately Plantier closed the deal for over what's the name 25%. And I'm like, damn, I could have just left it because I had more time. I didn't buy this weekly option. I bought option expiring was the name. Oh um, uh, February 19, which um at a $26 strike price. So the, the stock, it has a lot of momentum and it has so much, what's the name? Um, so much, what's the name? Um, 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 house name house name out there. Everybody just talk about it and everything. So like those kind of stocks is like easy money. Like all those plants here, Facebook, they're just like easy money. You just got to know when to get into them and then once you get into them, just stay comfortable in them. Like they, they are stocks whereby even if you beat them down, let's say, 50%, 60%, they could just turn over. Like, it's just like Tesla and the rest. But there are some stocks, if you're beating down 80% and you want an option, please don't hold it. Sell as much as possible because in options, it has so much gimmick. That was the name, makes the option goes against you because of theta and the rest. You can see a stock going up and then you end up not making money. So you need yeah. to know the implied volatility and know what stock you're dealing with. And 
do not try to be playing auctions on a finished stack. I'm telling yeah, you guys, and, and, this is and from my experience. We're ha we'll have a whole section um, for the options yeah. that Yakubu is going to be talking to here for all the new folks. There's a couple of things that, that Yakubu brought up in there. Um, one, uh, for the new folks here, um, don't panic. Don't panic. Um, stocks will come back. Um, and especially now, I think that uh, in these next 100 days, especially with a, a lot of money being injected into the US economy and, and just a focused effort on getting rid of the virus here, um, we're going to see a lot of positive moves and a lot of stocks, um, EVs, uh, things like that. And then the other point that um, Yakubu brought up was, is, you know, with the options and stuff like that, you know, only play options on a stock that you own and you know which way it's going because otherwise it, it, you're just like, you know, skipping stones or th throwing pennies in a well. And also um, give, give yourself times on those options because I did that with Seoul. I had a, I had a call on on Seoul and I thought well you know it's going to hit 30 um last week and it my my call ended on the 19th and Boozy hit I was like no nah! oh, that's so much money I had uh and Yakubu told me Yakubu told me too he's like dude that's too short <laughs> I'm like oh, yeah idiot yeah we'll listen to our guru on that but I had two options on McDonald's this week one call and one put, one was a, it was a put at 207 and a half and the call was at 215 and the freaking stock ended at 213, right dead set in the middle and I lost everything. And, you know, that was one of those ones where I had gotten a signal from one of these apps and I was kind of testing the signal. Well, it failed on both of them. So I don't know if I want to use that app, right? Um, you know, for some of you new traders, uh, you're going to have to experiment sometimes and be ready to risk and lose on a theory. Like, like for me this week, I, I have McDonald's stock. I played both options, neither one won. And all I wanted to do was see which one might win. Um, so I had to take the risk and I lost about a hundred bucks. So, you know, not happy about that, but with McDonald's, old school stock it'll last for a long time i'm not worried about it coming back up um let's see uh we're running limited on the time on this zoom meeting again i want to make sure um we'll just touch on this one within the last few minutes trading platforms and tools we've already kind of touched on this a little bit uh thinkorswim schwab robin hood weeble um International Brokers, that's IBKR. E-Trade's got an app. Fidelity has an app. Um, you know, Yakubu was talking earlier. Um, oh, for whatever reason, I, I have my drawing tools going. Um, these are these are kind of the, the popular ones. They have um, the phone apps and stuff like that. And for new folks, it kind of behooves you to, if you have some money, split it up. Um, Yakubu, you brought up in that, that last bit, um, having a long-term account, right? So you have ones for Apple and Facebook and uh, GM and Ford and things like that, that you're gonna have. The company's been around forever. They're not going anywhere and their stock just rises. Generally stocks like that will have dividends. You want dividend stocks in your long-term holds. But for me, uh, that long-term account is my Schwab account. And my day trading account is my Thinkorswim. And my penny stock account is my Webull. So I only have like 600 bucks on there. So those are kind of the popular ones. I'm not sure if anybody um, uses E-Trade or Fidelity. I haven't personally used them. So anyone who has, I'd love to hear what your opinions are. Go ahead and unmute yourself and and chime in if you have yeah so um i mean fidelity i did um i did have one but that was like actually through my job 401k at the time so um i was i never used it to do anything actually i was just buying stocks and that was actually when i um got into trading too and the funny thing is i used to just go and find this old research buy the stock like a penny stock i, I could buy like 
two million worth of this stock and think like this stock was gonna change my life. But down along the line, I could even sell the stock. I lost money on those stocks. So since that time, I'm like, you know what? I just don't want to use Fidelity anymore. I just want a fresh start. But it's good for a long-term account. If you want to use it for like options or day trading, it's not, it's like those old account, those old way of, you know, it's not very, very user-friendly like that. It's just some, some, somehow, I don't know. That's just my experience. So maybe if you guys find it enticing, let us know as well. 1980s, uh, we're stuck in the 80s type bank. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's, that's my words on here. So and it's I just told- good for like long-term, long-term account, just buying stuff and leaving them in there, yeah. And then yeah. they're very good with the taxes and everything. They'll tell you how much tax you have to pay before. So if let's say you make this amount of money, they'll be able to tell you, you could calculate it on the app, um, on their website. Yeah. So that that side, yeah, it's it's just a lot of things in one. So yeah, if you don't know about it, you you you'll find yourself not even knowing what you're doing and stuff like that. So yeah, does Weibo, trainer, I have trainer, a question. Please. Does Weibo do the taxing taxes thing? I've never spent a year on it yet. So yeah, 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 yeah. Um, all all of these people will send you what's the name? Um, the ten ninety nine forms. Yeah, okay. all of them. Everybody does the taxes. They'll send you that. Um, every brokerage make sure to do that because they're gonna report it to the IRS as well. So as you trade, yeah. just don't forget you need to save something too for you know Uncle Sam. <laughs> the government wants their cut, everyone. Just, right, just right. a quick. Um, for, for Robinhood, you know, you can just connect it to your like a uh, whatever that tax app is, and then you can um, just directly give them access, and they'll pull everything. In. Yeah, I think people have that too. I think if you have a uh, QuickBooks, I believe that they have a connector that will automatically pull in your your information from Robinhood, Schwab. Uh, I know that my uh, uh, TurboTax is all or Mint or whatever it, the Intuit group of of products. Um, I I did Robinhood two years in a row, so I'm just wondering, Weibo, because I've not done it yet. I like That's it because fine. I like it because their charts are good. Their their presentation on the app is great. Um, the performance charts you they have access to options. They, you know, there's some cheesy parts like they've got games and spinner wheels and all that kind of stuff for kids. But, um, you know, really for me, the bang of the buck is the charts that they have in the the app and just um, news. Yeah, and and the the big advantage is that there's zero fee. And so like on news. my on my TDA account, like every trade I'm making, they're taking a penny or two, uh, or maybe even a couple bucks. Um, yeah, I, I I did notice that Weibo offers you a Roth IRA that's free trading. Yeah. So that's kind of cool too with Weibo, where I just opened it the other day. So that the was, only the only thing that I I can say that about Weibo is uh, because my 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 buddy uses it all the time and he's always complaining that it crashed um so weeble with all the new traders um that the covid pandemic has uh, made has had trouble keeping up yeah uh everybody i just got the notification that the um the meeting's about to end so that'll end the first half of this um, I'm going to, when it ends, I'll send out a new uh, link for the Zoom meeting uh, for the second half. Uh, Yakubu, um, we'd like to, I've got this great picture of you that I got from a screenshot. <laughs> I hope it's not, oh, yeah. I hope it's not unflattering. Um, but in right. the next, in the next Zoom meeting that I'm going to post in about five, 10 minutes when this one ends, we're going to start at this point. And um, I pulled up the just a really quick screenshot from Robin Hood um, because I noticed that this was the tool you were using last week when we were discussing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, I'm sure I can even um, share my screen as well. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll go oh. ahead and turn it over to you right. at that point. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Because I'm on my tablet, so I'm sure maybe I can open a Tink or Swim or. Um, I think I also have the web, the Weibo too, so maybe I can open it as well. So. Okay, great. So uh, everyone, the the meeting will cut off. I'll post a new link in the um, WhatsApp group, and we will go through the ghetto options. Um, we'll go through some charts and indicators. 
the Daniel, you had asked about the candlesticks. And so um, I had put the um, this nice graphic that you had uh, put in there. We can go over this and talk about them, pull up some charts and things like that. Um, we'll talk about our favorite. Mike, one thing, uh, I don't know if you have on your agenda or not. Oh, yeah, you, you do, favorite indicators. That's good. Yep. Sorry. Uh, Jarek, you, you'll be our kind of expert on this one. Um, and then um, I built a thing in TradingView that I just want to share with the group and get some feedback. Um, it's, it's an indicator that will show your entry points and exit points and your, um, your stop losses, like where you should set your, your stop losses and your limits. Um, this is something I'm working on that I'd like to give to the group. Um, and it, it's a trading view. Um, you can get a free trading view account. And if I give you access to this, um, cause I'm going to lock it down. I don't want it free to the public, but if I give you the access to this, you can use it for free on your trading view, your free trading view account. And hopefully, um, it will bring some benefit. So what, what I want to get is, um, some feedback on things like, um, the RSI, right? The nine day, the 27 day, the 28 day, which one do we use? Um, the Bollinger bands, there's these things called Ichimoku clouds that, um, are really popular. And, so th those are the things that we'll kind of go over. And I just want to get people's inputs, like what you'd like to see out of this thing that I'm building because I'm a programmer and I get off on building things like this. So um, this is going to be called the Triple Rim Lambos Trading Group or TLTG uh, indicator on TradingView. And we'll discuss that. Um, like I said, the Zoom meeting is about to end and so I'll send out the next link and we'll get started on um, the second half, starting with ghetto options. Sound good, everyone? Yes. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and just, it says we got five minutes. Um, do you wanna end it now and switch over? I could just send out the link now because I can, I can stop the meeting and just start the next one. Yeah, we could just do that and save time to that. Everybody oh, I missed my introduction. So let me give my introduction for a second. And, oh, and please. We can move on. <laughs> please do. Um, so my name is Kranti. I'm from uh, Houston, Texas. I joined this group about two months or three months ago. And uh, thank you all for, you know, sharing all your thoughts and ideas. And I um, I lost almost seven, eight grand in the March crash. Oof, and I've almost man. made it back. Can we see your face? Can we see your face? <laughs> okay. Uh, my Zoom app is not allowing. Like one second, let me see. <laughs> oh, I have to change the settings. One second. Okay. We like to put. Yeah, the, but, the, uh, the I'll, I'll, I'll show up in the next round. Uh, but sure. I just wanted to well, thank we, you all. We, and, we wanna you know, see, we wanna see you smile next time. You know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, otherwise I'll get a I'll capture a screenshot like this of you and then yeah. <laughs> I think it's a good shot actually. It looks yeah, like yeah, you're yeah, excited, yeah, you're just like, shot. holy crap, look how much money I won. Ah. Oh. <laughs> All right, everybody. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and end this and we'll see you in a couple minutes um on the next meeting. I'll post it here in just a sec on the WhatsApp. Uh, let's see, stop share and end.